All right, yeah, uh, Salakia, you know, Satan was at, uh, messing up on me, just completely cut off on me. But, um, yeah, back in uh, Proverbs 8 and 4, and it says, Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Meaning what? Be of an understanding mind. So, you know, that's the point of these Proverbs is going into... Uh, proverb, Proverbs, uh, the first chapter, and it says, um, yeah, I'll start from one. It's uh, Proverbs one and one. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, the king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment and equity. But they call those the, the, uh, cardinal virtues or something to that effect what esau calls it in uh you know in his capacity how he deals with you know our word you know um verse four to give subtlety to the simple to the young man knowledge and discretion a wise man will hear and will increase learning and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels so it's to guide the young men because you know how they always had a saying, uh, you know, like the children and stuff are the future. So what's younger brothers, you know, that's in the spirit, you know, we're a part of this great ministry to continue on, you know, uh, the name of Yahweh and the name of Yahweh Shah, you know, to further proclaim it uh, each and every single day and to glorify the Lord, you know, so uh, that his name is magnified, that his deeds are magnified, that he's that Yahweh Shah is coming back, you know. And to warn the people of these different things and tell them who we are, you know. So it's all for the guidance of, you know, the young man. Matter of fact, that made me think of um, another scripture as well, because there's always something that, uh, uh, <clears throat> damn, it's lucky that Apostle Gabar uh, always says, you know, that's why, um, well, he said it a few times before, that's why, you know, the, uh, the Lord usually brings in what well, a lot more younger men, you know, because, you know, as young men, you know, we have, uh, you know, we pretty much have the youth, the, the, the fortitude, the, um, you know, to be able to go out there in the highways and byways and really put in that effort. We out here at a war. So, you know, of course you're going to recruit, more young, fresh, you know what I mean, men, if you're going out to war, you know, men have to be uh, willing to go out, be apt to teach, you know, to uh, to battle, you know, to uh, defend the gospel, you know. Um, this is uh, Lamentations 3 and 25, and it says, The Lord is good unto them uh, that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. So that's why the most out, you know, chose a lot of us. And even when the apostles, they came into the truth, they were real young men. You know, the, the men, I mean, the Lord chooses, you know, men uh, when they're in their youth, you know, so we can actually have time to be uh, uh, groomed and, and molded, you know, at, at a young, ripe age, you know, the Lord allows us to have, you know, to have had our worldly experiences and different things like that so that we could be able to come to this point and actually accept and receive this truth and, you know, to see the ways in which how we were living, to know that in this truth, you know, this is truly the best way of living because when we compare the things, we can clearly see, you know, what is more beneficial and what isn't, you know. So going back to uh Proverbs uh the eighth chapter, uh yeah, Proverbs eight and six, and it says, Here for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For and you know, that's what uh you know, having that uh that discretion and you know that uh subtlety and you know the knowledge, the wisdom, justice and equity, that's all of those things you know, that the scriptures provide, you know, for we will be able to speak excellent things and, and, uh, speak of things right, you know, when we 
constantly examine ourselves and when we rehearse the things of the scriptures, we actually apply them to our lives. Okay, so there's uh, verse seven. It says, uh, for my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination uh, to my lips. Uh, all the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing fraud or perverse in them, you know, and that speaking of the, of you know, the, the scriptures being the truth, us proclaiming the truth and not no abominations to come out of our lips. You know, the way that uh, two thirds act, the way that they speak, um, not specifically the some of the exact words in which they speak, but the way they come off, their, their thought patterns, you know, uh, taint their mind and it makes them say perverse things out of their mouth, you know, that just shouldn't be, that isn't a part of our heritage, that isn't a part of our culture. You know, but our people being brainwashed, you know, their thought patterns and the things that roll off of their tongue, you know, are all esteemed from the so-called white man's world of today, you know. So, um, going to uh, verse 9, it says, They are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge. So, and that's all the ways of the Mosiah. You know, it's plain to him that understandeth and right to them that know knowledge. Because if you know what's right, it's going to be plain for you to understand. It's going to be easy for you to understand it. Very simple. You know, the apostles they always mention this as well, that this truth is simple. You know, it's, it's real simple when you really think about it. But it's simple to us because the Lord allowed us, you know, what the Lord opened our mind and allow us to accept this truth, you know. Uh, verse 10, it says, receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. So this is what it's all about, because, you know, according to Romans 11 and 33, uh, oh, the death of riches and the knowledge and wisdom and understanding of the most high. That's what the real treasure is. OK, for wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Why? Because wisdom is going to pre help preserve your life. With wisdom, you're going to know how to deal uh, with different things that you come across on a daily uh, on a daily basis. You know, you're going to know how to deal with your health. You're going to know how to deal with work as you job. You're going to know how to, uh, you know, deal with, you know, uh, family members getting on your nerves or whatever the case may be. You're going to know how to deal a lot better by the wisdom that you have and, you know, the average problems that affect most people, you know, you're going to breeze through them a lot easier. And the most things that, you know, uh, affect people or arguments or different disputes and stuff like that, it's not going to phase you to the point that it would phase the next person. And you're going to know properly, you know, uh, how to maneuver around those things so that you're not causing yourself much more of a headache. You know, you deal with things wisely, you know, but just having money and being a fool, you know, that can't compare to the wisdom because somebody that has money but is a fool, what good really is that money? Because they don't know they don't have the wisdom to know how to deal with it, you know? So um what was I at again? Uh yeah, verse verse twelve it says, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. You know, this is all things that wisdom does. You know, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the fraud mouth. Do I hate? Why? Because these are things that belong to uh, a fraud man, the natural man, not the spiritual man. OK, it says uh, for, verse 14, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding and have strength because ultimately what this wisdom is the breath of the most high. You know, going according to uh, Wisdom of Solomon 7, 24 and 25. All right. By me, kings reign and princes degree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. OK, so by seeking the Lord, that's how we attain that wisdom and one of my favorite scriptures, uh, wisdom of Solomon 6 and 20 says, therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth us to a kingdom. 
So those that love wisdom, that love the breath of the Most High and everything the Most High has to offer, going to find the Most High early, going to truly have those riches. Okay. It's <coughs> lucky. Okay. So um, in verse 18, it says, riches and honor are with me, yet durable, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. And just to think of that word revenue, you know, income coming in, you know, that's uh, when I think of that, I think of more of a residual income, something that just constantly, it just constantly accumulates, just constantly building up. That's what the most size wisdom does into us. It constantly allows us to grow day by day by day. It's constantly building up that spiritual uh, a bank account because as long as you're constantly putting in your efforts within this truth, you know, applying things, putting up the press to the most high, that, um, that residual income is going to continue to roll in. We're going to continue to get wiser, continue to grow and be more spiritual within this thing, you know? And, and that's one of the most important things that is to this truth is that wisdom, you know, having a hope, having a faith, you know, different things of that nature, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm going to stop right there because the rest of this, yeah, like I said, the rest of this gets into a, a, a mystery, which is not, is, you know, if you're a brother in this truth, it's not that deep, but for the average uh, person out there in the world, it's deep, you know, but um, yeah, Lord willing, yeah, I'm going to uh, do that uh, segment um, in the next lesson, and um, you know, I just hope this uh, segment I did from the first, pretty much the first half of this chapter was edifying. I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bar Shimi Al Shah, the Bawanis, the Apostles, and the Elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom, Yahweh Bar Shimi Al Shah, Waha Rakar Kudash, to the luck out there, doing this work of faith and live with love, truth, sincerity. Shalom.